Now for more on security in the southeast and an update on government activities in the state, we cross live now to Mwahia, where the Abia state governor, Okezie Ikweazu, joins us now. It's good to have you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for giving us your time. Now, um, I'll go straight to the matter. Some have said regarding Ibubagu, the announcement um, of this joint security outfit, that even though it's a welcome development, it's, it's like it's a bit late to the party. Why has it taken so long for the Southeast governors to come to this consensus? Oh, no, this is just um, season two of um, uh, an initiative that commenced so, so many months ago. You recall that sometime in the past, we announced in a joint meeting at uh, Enugu the, the uh, uh, inauguration of a security committee headed by retired General Omai, draw, drawing um, membership from uh, uh, security officers nominated by the various governors in the region. And that committee has been working and they came up with um, a recommendation that every state in the South should set up a vigilante group. That is why in Abia we have what we call the Homeland Security Outfit, which we, uh, we, we set up uh, so many months ago. We have inaugurated them and um, we have uh, given them uniforms and we have deployed them. Uh, the Commission of Police is aware, the IGP, uh, then IGP is also aware. And then um, in, in uh, Enugu, I'm sure they call theirs forest guards. So all the, and I think in uh, uh, Anambra, they call it Bochapo or something. So every state in the South it has uh, one uh, kind of vigilante group or the other. So this is not new. I am miffed by the reports I get that people think that uh, we are responding late. No. But what we have just done with the Bubago is to integrate the, the, the activities of uh, these various vigilante groups from the various states to have, um, you know, a, 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 a central command that will uh, help us drive intelligence gathering help us drive uh, uh, information sharing and help us drive digitalization of policing. Because in terms of land area, the Southeast is not very vast uh, and we, we, we have very porous borders and relationships between one another. We intermarry a lot. So uh, it, it will be difficult for uh, us to pollute the air in one state and expect that the other state will not be equally polluted because it's, it's in the air. Therefore, we want everybody to synergize and come to a convergence in terms of intelligence gathering, in terms of operation, in terms of logistic support for one state uh, and another. So this is what it is. It's not that we are starting now. We have had some form of security outfit in our various states, but the time for us to act together is now. How important would you say are these vigilante groups? Uh, and from what you said, you, know, you haven't just started now. And it's not just in your state, in so many other states as well, uh, they use vigilante groups. But how important would you say these vigilante groups are in fighting uh, insecurity in the state and in the region and even in the nation at large? They are very, very, very important. You know that they... they the basic ingredient in um, every security uh, strategy is uh, the groundswell or, or uh, mobilization of the public. Because you, you need the public to be part of your security architecture, uh, to give you support, to give you cooperation, to provide vital information uh, about uh, movement and tracks of criminals. Um, the, 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 the uniformed officers or those we know as law enforcement officers, cannot do it all by themselves. Uh, that is why it is important to recruit um, uh, gatekeepers from the various communities and put them in charge of the track roads, bush tracks, and get them to monitor and police what is happening in the various forests within their domain. But um, we, we have uh, always at all times tried to, um, uh, you know, draw 
some support and strength and synergy from the Nigeria police and the Nigerian army uh, and all of that. But going forward now, we, we, we want to stamp uh, our authority a little uh, deeper uh, to make sure that we can begin to help ourselves uh, until reinforcement or help comes. We just cannot tie our hands and sit by and watch things uh, go adrift. Okay, I know you said that um, it, you haven't just started today, but I want to get your insight into whether the recent occurrences that happened in the southeast, I'm referring to the fact that you called for a curfew on Monday, and then there was information that came to the press that you had found, uh, or there, there were suspicions of an explosive device at the Union Primary School, Afaruku, in Umwahia, and, and that led to your um, saying that you were, you were drawing on some intelligence. So would you say that some of those developments, not to mention the ones in Imo State as well, the events in Imo State, led to or uh, jump-started this development of uh, Ibubagu? You are not far from the truth. We are responding to the exigencies of the moment. Um, we, 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 we tried in some way to be a little bit uh, uh, laid back in terms of our response in trying to see how best we can, um, uh, you know, navigate through the issues. But um, we, 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 we have seen some spike in, um, in this uh, uh, insecurity situation in our region. And uh, we, we decided to respond uh, with uh, a bag, and that is why. So it's not far from it. But um, we, if we had not uh, recruited vigilant, sharp eyes, we wouldn't have been able to identify the suspected uh, uh, explosive, quote unquote, where they were. Uh, uh, so that we were able to identify it before it did any harm uh, 